Blessings, brothers and sisters, in the name of our most mighty, most awesome, most glorious Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I want to um, share something with you guys that's really important to understand, you guys. And it goes along with, um, you know, I hope everybody, I hope and pray everybody's um, examining the leaven in their lives. And um, I know that me and other brothers and sisters are praying that the Lord will bring to the forefronts of all of our minds and all of our hearts the leaven. But I pray the, pr the prayer it really depends on each and every person, you guys, whether or not they're going to decide to, uh, if they're going to humbly look at their the leaven inside of them and give it to the Lord right? So that they can be healed, not to condemn you or to, have, to put you in shame, but that in the hopes and in the prayer that you would be freed from these things. Because a requirement from the Lord, you guys, is, is that you have to walk humbly. And part of the spirit of humility is uh, being a, having a willingness and, a, and an ability and a desire to look at these things, our shortcomings, because this is a thing, this Passover season is when people examine the leaven and so that they can grow. This is gonna set the tone for the whole year. And actually those who do not keep Passover, you guys, um, they, uh, they are cut off from being in the remnant. They actually are cut off from being the holy set apart people. And um, they will actually, um, not have access to the sanctuary. They will, um, they are going to be cut off from among the Lord's people. And so, um, and so you guys, it really doesn't matter the rituals uh, that you do, right? For Passover, um, communion does matter, right? Because that is the sacrifice, that is the power of the sacrifice of Calvary, that is as Yeshua said in Matthew 26, 26, he took bread, blessed it, and then said, this is my body, took wine, gave thanks for it, this is my blood. Um, but the other things, you guys, are just religious symbols. Those are, um, those are not what the Lord desires of us, you guys, is that we look at the inner, at, the, at our inner leaven and, and humbly bring it before him, admit it, confess it, repent from it and turn away from it so that we can grow with him. Because this is the time of year when the Lord comes out of his most glorious sanctuary and he, he smites that spirit of bondage or that spirit of bondage. He smites that spirit of Pharaoh, right? And so this is the time of year where this is going to set the whole tone for the whole year of you, right? And you don't want to be cut off from the people. You, this is the time where you want to um, be keeping the feast with sincerity and truth. I'm going to show you that scripture here in a second. But you guys, this is very important to understand. Look at this. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, or in uh, my boss, who's Egyptian, uh, that name Satan is Shaitan. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Shaitan, which deceiveth the whole world, was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So you guys, this um, Satan, the Antichrist, the deceiver, he deceiveth the whole entire world, you guys. So anybody who is about their flesh, anybody who is a part of this world, you guys, they are going to be deceived because they're attached to this world. They are of the world. The flesh is of this world. Okay. So who are, who are those who are not deceived? that per scripture, per scripture, right? Well, those who are not deceived are these. And there shall arise, uh, well, we'll read this in context. And there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, if, if it were possible. Now, you guys, a lot of people get this scripture confused 
and they say that it means that even the elect can be deceived, but that's not true, you guys. Um, the Lord has a holy set apart people that are filled with the Holy Spirit, that are guided with the spirit of truth, and that spirit of truth guides them into all truths. So they cannot be deceived. If it were possible, they shall deceive the elect, if it were possible. That's not possible, you guys. The elect are not deceived. Those are people who are full of the spirit and guided by the spirit of truth and are growing in holiness, are made manifest and revealed this day and are growing in holiness and righteousness and they will advance and manifest the kingdom of Christ. So in order for you to be the elect, right? So this is what you need to make sure is that you are part of the elect you should be seeking this you guys every person on this earth has free will to make the decisions that they want to make okay and you can make it and every circumstance and every situation that happens in your life you know um we have a god with the holy word of god you guys with the word of god we can choose we can choose or not. We have a guide and a manual, the Bible, to guide us into every situation that happens. Every situation that we come across, the Lord has shown us what, how to respond and handle each and every situation, right? And the elect seek these things out. Now, you guys, those, um, that's why... I want to emphasize on Passover. That's why Passover is such an important time, because this is a time when the Lord will deliver anything. He'll deliver you from any anything, anything that is holding you from entering into your fullness. He will deliver you from those spirits in this season if you keep um, if you keep uh, Passover now. The elect keep, acknowledge, and keep Passover, okay? And I want to show you who the elect are. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, right? Isaiah 42. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by name and surnamed thee. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and my elect shall inherit that, inherit it. You guys, the elect of God. Uh, in my prayers, you'll you'll sometimes hear me say, "Lord, um, establish us on your holy mountains," because those are the mountains, you guys. When you read the book of Ezekiel, where an actual uh, sanctuary, um, a, a reflection of the sanctuary up in heaven will be established there where God's feet will settle down and the elect, the line of, of um, God's elect, his holy children are going to inherit those mountains. That is where they are going to be established on, right? In, in the, um, look at this, you guys. They shall not build and, and, and another shall, and have it they shall not plant and another eat for as the days of a tree are the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands you guys it says this in another version and like the septuagint it says that his people will live as long as a tree again like adam and eve they live they live to be very old right it says they are not going to build for another to inhabit. You know how people get construction jobs and then they have to go build a house for somebody else. Or, you know, farmers, they plant food for someone else to eat. The Lord says it's not going to be like that anymore. Right. This is talking about the kingdom of Christ. And so um, here's Matthew 24, 24 again. So you guys. um these elect are not deceived and they're guided with the spirit of truth and every person has the ability has the free will and access to the same grace and the same power that the elect do to um to obtain these blessings and to be this um set apart people and one of those requirements you guys 
is to um, is to um, follow the word of God, okay, and and to um, to love the keep the uh, keep the word of God, to keep His commandments, and follow the Lord with all of your heart, mind, and strength to walk humbly with Him. When you love the Lord, you guys, you love His word, right? And in any situation, every Thing that can happen to you, every situation that happens to you on a day-to-day -day basis, this, uh, the Word of God tells you how to handle each and every situation. Now, you guys, there's um, a something that is happening where they're saying, Iran or um, Israel is being surrounded by a ring of fire. Okay. And I don't think I can um, play this, you guys. But if you look down here, it says Iran back Houthis, complete ring of fire around Israel with new front in Yemen. So they're seeing um, Jerusalem is, um, or Israel is surrounded by armies all around. Okay. And they're calling a um that there's they're saying that there's a ring of fire around um around israel and what this means you guys the reason why i'm pointing this out and why this is significant is because i want to show you something when a woman is giving labor okay crowning is often referred to as the ring of fire because there's a lot of uh when when the crownings happen and the baby's head is opening up that that woman's area it's tearing a lot of the tissues and the muscles and so around the delivery area is called the ring of fire in the birthing process it's when your baby's head becomes visible in the birth canal and you're fully dilated it is the home stretch look at this you guys home stretch in more ways than one why does crowning get so much attention ring of fire home stretch birthing canal now you guys um what happens to um people when god's people whom he loves when they don't um when they don't fully uh turn to the lord and they still have things that they're holding on to um, you know, as for my calling in Christ, you guys, I have to let people know this, okay, is that those who do not fully sit, walk humbly with the Lord and fully submit and get rid of the leaven in their lives, what is going to happen is we are about to go into um, great tribulations. And in that tribulation, there's going to be a birth. Through this tribulation, you guys, or this birthing process is when, um, is how believers are going to be purged from all of the things, the leaven in their life and the things that they're continuing to hold on to. This tribulation is going to purge you from all of these things, right? So that's why we've been, um, on this journey together and getting rid of our, of this leaven in our lives now right so that because this is what the lord desires us to do so that you don't have so much of it to endure during the tribulation right uh, i'm going to show you something in genesis 3 16 it's he said to the, the lord said to the woman i will surely multiply your pain in childbearing and you shall bring forth children in pain you shall bring forth children right john 16 when a woman is giving birth she now she has sorrow because her hour has come but when she has delivered the baby she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world right so um you know in the revelation 12 sign um the city shall be taken in the stronghold seeds for the heart sees the heart of the warriors of Moab shall be in that day like the heart of a woman in her birth pains okay 
so you guys through this birthing this birthing process right look at this therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of israel so you guys this is the birthing process that is going to happen um is going to uh, end in the great tribulation right this is part of the birthing process the great tribulation is what is going to purge our people from all of their error and all of the things that they haven't worked on in this time that's why i want to show you guys this so that you really focus on this um this uh passover you guys really examine and humble yourself and examine you guys the leaven in your life and give these things to the lord so that he so and he will deliver these things from you but if you're not humble enough to acknowledge or see these things because you guys we're praying that the lord would reveal this leaven to all believers and we know that the lord hears our prayers and is answering our prayers but it's going to be your decision whether or not you are going to humble yourself and give these things to the lord and examine yourself not not so much other people around you you guys you went on judgment day you will not be judged by what other people have done around you you will be judged by how you have handled these things do not be deceived by the enemy you guys remember that great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world if it were possible they shall deceive the elect if if it was possible you want to be the elect you guys guided with the spirit of truth and all things if you're guided with the spirit of truth you guys and you are sealed with the holy spirit you will love truth no matter what the cost is no matter if it's something that you have to examine on the inside of yourself no matter if it's your own sh it doesn't matter you will love truth and so i encourage you guys to look at this passover take the rest of this week you guys and really reflect look at first corinthians 1 It says, purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Thank you, Lord. Let us therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with leaven of malice and wickedness, but the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You guys, this is for you to don't worry so much about the physical signs of Passover, but do this, you guys. Examine the leaven in your life. The Lord is going to bring the leaven to the forefront of your minds and your hearts. But what you do with it or don't do with it is your free will decision. But I'm here to tell you, if you decide to hold on to that, and not keep the Passover, not keep it the way that the Lord said, the Lord desires us to, then you are going to have to be purged of these things during a, a turbulent process, you guys. And it's called the birth of um, the people of Israel. And that is going to refine the people um, of, of Israel. It's gonna refine our people. When you look at Isaiah, chapter one or maybe it's four um it talks about yes look when the lord when the lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of zion and shall have purged the blood of jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning this is how that you guys the scriptures are going to be fulfilled it's not that that's not um 
that's not debatable. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall purge them, purge the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment. That spirit of judgment, you guys, is part of part of that is the great tribulation the birthing process and that is going to purge people and it's going to be you guys it is going to be hard but god didn't give us the spirit of fear if that makes you fearful you guys that means you're you're there's something inside of you that's hindering you from your fullness that you're still perfecting love inside of you so really you guys acknowledge your let the leaven in your life and the lord will deliver you from anything that is hindering you from your fullness but you have to truly keep the feast with sincerity and truth i love you all in jesus name amen